Hey, I'm Yadi. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to share some to be live hacks with you guys that will hopefully make your lives as a feeding tube user a little bit easier. So stay tuned to find out what they are. So before I start with the tips, I just wanted to quickly apologize for how crazy my hair looks. I've been trying to grow it out since it's in the in-between stages. I don't know what to do with it. So I was trying out a new look and I don't know. I think it just makes me look like, <laughs> I don't know, like I was stranded in the wild for three days without a mirror or a hairbrush or whatever. I don't know. Just please ignore it. So anyways, um, I think that these tips will be like super helpful for those of you who are new to feeding tubes but also I feel like some of them might be helpful even to those that are you know veterans and kind of you know have a grasp on everything maybe some of these will be new to some of you too so I hope that you guys will find these helpful So the first tip that I wanted to share with you guys has to do with the priming method that you might use for your to prime your feed. Um, I have an infinity pump, which I know I've showed you guys in the past videos. Um, so like each pump, I believe, has their own different like types of bags. So this might only apply to those of you who have the infinity bags. But this is like another method of priming besides using the um, the prime option on the pump itself because that can be, I mean it could take a long time, I don't know, if you have a you know, feeding tube and you've used the pumps for a while, you know that you, know, you have to hold it down, you have to sustain it, you can't just click it and then let go and let it run, you have to physically put your finger on there and hold it down. For however long it takes which you know can take a while and like for me I struggle because of my chronic pain sometimes with that so this can sometimes be a little bit easier uh, which is on the bags on the little cassette tape type thing if you look um, closely you might see a little like a drawing of a drop it could be kind of hard to tell, but I think you can see it right there. You can also feel around with your finger. It's like raised up. If you pinch it like this between your fingers, if you pinch it like that, that can be another option of like priming. And like this is just an empty bag, but I'll insert a clip of me um, doing it so you guys can see like the formula running through because it does work. Yeah, like if you have an infinity pump you can do that i'm not sure if you have like another brand of pump if you can do that with your bags i mean you can try oh and i forgot to mention there's also like if you don't want to like hold it like pinch it with your fingers i remember on etsy they also sell like these kind of gadgets where you can like clip it on there and it'll hold this down for you so that you could just clip it on there and hold it down and it'll you know prime it for you i've never used those before i've seen them and i thought they were interesting but i've never used those so i mean if you want to look into that that could also be another option for you but i just can't personally like tell you like oh yeah they work because i haven't used them but if you want to try that out that's another option available the second tip also has to do with your pump and it's for when, I don't know if this has happened to you guys, but like sometimes your pump, you know, obviously it has all these like alarms for when something's wrong. Like, oh, there's 
air in the bag or like the tubing is kinked or like or the alarm for when the feed is done and it lets you know but sometimes the um the pub will like just beep randomly and you you know you've checked all that you know if you've checked you know there's no air there's no kinking the feed isn't done and you're like wondering why it's still beeping and you know you've checked to make sure your tube isn't clogged um sometimes the the pump will start beeping because you have to clean out the um like the inside of the pump will get dusty and so you have to clean out the little sensors that it has inside that you know can sense like the formula I guess and like helps it like run through and this is a tip that I learned from one of the med students in Mexico the one that was like renting out the pump to us over there and like the pumps over there are older so they're different but I've also used it on this pump on my infinity pump and it also works for this one too um which is that you take a you take a q-tip and you dip it in some alcohol you don't want to like drench it you don't want it to be like super wet but just a little bit of alcohol and then use the q-tip to kind of clean out the sensors because like i said they get a little bit dusty and sometimes that's why the machine will beep at you constantly because they can't really read well, it can't really do its function that it's supposed to do. So you just clean it out with a little bit of alcohol and then, you know, you try and run it and then it'll stop. Like, you don't constantly beep at you every five minutes. And like I said, I learned that from the med student in Mexico and the pumps over there are different, but it also, it's worked on this pump too for me. So if you want to, if you have an infinity, you know, you can try it. And if you have another pump, you could also try it and see if it works. Um, you know, obviously just like I said, make sure it's not like drenched in alcohol because you also don't want to get it wet because, you know, they can, that can ruin them. So, you know, make sure you're not actually getting it wet. And I'll also insert a clip of me doing that here so you guys can see how it works. So for tip numero tres, I wanted to give you guys an alternative to secure your tubes with besides using tape. Because I know tape can be irritating to a lot of people. It irritates my skin if I use it a lot. Also, like it gets really red and having to peel it off really hurts. So I get like why... You know, a lot of people like to use things like grip locks or like alternatives for like sensitive skin, but um, like grip locks are expensive and they can also be like hard to get. Like I wasn't able to get my hospital to cover them for me. So um, an alternative to that is um, tube clips. And you know, these are like, I know I've mentioned these in like past videos. These are better because, you know, they're more, um, you know, you can reuse them over and over, which, you know, as opposed to like grip locks or tape, which you can only use one. Well, grip locks, you can use them for like a week or something before, you know, the adhesive runs out. Runs out. Yeah, these you can use over and over and over until they kind of give out and, you know, they have different kinds. These are made out of like a thicker fabric and then, oh. You have these that are like made out of ribbon which this one you can tell like the print kind of rubbed off from me using it so much um but yeah these are good for you know you can wrap your line around in them 
and it'll hold it up you just clip it to your shirt or to your pants or wherever you want and it'll you know hold it up and it's good for you know when you have a lot you don't want that excess tubing just hanging around so that it could you know get caught and stuff but also um it can also help like if you get a lot of if you struggle with granulation tissue sometimes it can be because like the tube is hanging down like if you just leave it hanging down like the weight uh well it could like cause like if it's moving if you don't have your tube secured it'll be like moving around and rubbing against the skin and sometimes that could like cause the granulation tissue so if you struggle with that it could also like help if you use something to secure it. I would recommend the clips because like I said they're I feel essentially you get more bang for your buck you know you pay for it once and you use it like a thousand times or whatever but yeah I mean apart from the clips I know there's also um some people use like they they sell these belts that you can put around like your abdomen and then put your um like wrap your tubing around in that I tried to use one of those ones but I don't feel comfortable like um having anything tight around my abdomen it just like I don't I don't like how it feels so that stuff doesn't really work for me but that's also another option that you have to you know hold your tube up so if if you find that tape doesn't really work for you then you know just know that there are different options out there and also just because I feel like a lot of people use like grip blocks because it's like the popular thing to to use or whatever but it's not like you know it's not really necessary because like I said they're hard to get so there are kind of like better options for that okay for tip number four I wanted to tell you guys about um for the bags like I know a lot of people have been told that the bags that you use for your pump that you can only use them for like one like 24 hours and then you have to throw them out and use a new one but I reuse them for like several days um and it's like fine like there's nothing wrong with it well I know like some people obviously some people maybe they have some sort of medical reason for having to you know only use one and then throw it out but I feel like most people don't know that you can use them for longer like I typically use them for about three or four days at a time and the way that I can you know reuse them for so long is that I clean my bags with uh I use hot water and that kind of helps get all the like the formula that sticks to the sides into the tubing it helps it kind of you know wash out better so if you clean them with hot water and it doesn't even have to it doesn't have to be like boiling hot obviously you know you don't want to you know burn yourself while you're um cleaning your bags but if you you know kind of between like warm and like really really hot like somewhere in between that like use that water to clean them out and it'll clean it out pretty good to the point where like I said you can reuse them for you know two three four days at a time I've, I've even reused them up to like a week a week and a half I think but obviously you know you, you don't have to if you have you know more bags available but this can be very helpful if you're traveling and you, you see that you're like maybe you miscalculated how many bags you were gonna need or you know something happened like one of them got punctured and you had to throw it out so you have less than the amount that you had you know calculated for so you could just you know like I said use a use them for like two or three days and then when you have to you know worry and be like oh my gosh what am I gonna do without a bag you can reuse them and you won't be left trying scrambling to find like bags somewhere um and like I said it's fine like it's not, nothing's gonna happen for tip number five I wanted to share with you um the ways that you can the different ways that you have for you know if you want to be on the go you want to take your feed with you um obviously you have the standard backpack method which you know you put your feet in here 
I've made a video um, where I show how I set up my feet and put it into my backpack. So if you want to go watch that to see how I do that. Um, but this is just like, I just wanted to mention, you know, for those of you that don't know, you know, you don't have to walk around with an IV pole all the time. You know, if you're leaving, if you're going to be out of the house all day, you have to, you know, go and do stuff. You can use a backpack and, you know, that way you can take your feed with you and you don't have to worry about like, oh, you know, I have to be out of the house. How am I going to run my formula and all of that? Um, and there's like a lot of different options. Obviously, this one was like a normal backpack and I bought it off of Etsy, like the seller, you know, customize it. She added like the grooves and stuff and the Velcro straps to hold the bag in. So, you know, you can, they sell ones, I think, like, I think you can get them from, like, your DME or, like, sell ones that are specifically for, you know, like, feeding tube pumps and stuff. Um, but from what I've heard, they're kind of, like, standard black boring bags. So, you know, if you want to get one that's different designs and more, like, colorful or fun, then I, um, I got mine off of Etsy and they have like so many different options because this one's like a mini backpack, you can't really tell, but it's a smaller size one, which I got because it was, um, cheaper, but they have like so many different options and designs and stuff. Obviously, you could probably, you know, just if you wanted to buy like a backpack, if you saw a backpack that you like and modify it, um, but I don't really no like I, I think there's tutorials online of how you can do that but I never really tried because to me it just seemed like too complicated um so I just decided to you know buy it already modified and I'm pretty happy with mine because like the velcro straps and everything have it's been very sturdy so it's lasted me like four years now so you know I, I feel like it was a good investment but there's also another option that this one's been more like recent, which is you can use a fanny pack and put your feet in, pump in here and then just, you know, strap it to like a belt and, you know, carry it around if you don't want to use a backpack because, you know, maybe you don't want to carry all that weight on you, on your, you know, shoulders. I know for me, sometimes the backpack can hurt and I have chronic shoulder pain. Um, so this is like another good option and I know I told you guys in my other video where I first told you guys about the fanny pack like that I would let you guys know how it worked out and I feel like it has been working out pretty well for me um I tend to like switch between the fanny pack and the backpack based on like what I need like if I need more like if I want to carry more stuff then I use like my backpack um but I feel like I do like the fanny pack better just because, like I said, it's easier, like, I don't have to worry about it causing pain on my shoulders. Um, the only thing is, for the fanny pack, like, I've noticed when... Well, first off, you gotta, you do have to kind of try and figure it out just because, like I had mentioned in that video I was talking about, like, you have to figure out how to get the tubing in a certain position so that it won't like be bending or kinking so that you know the machine will be beeping at you and stuff but once you figure that out that's like you know cool i basically have to wrap it around like the pump so that the pump kind of holds it in place so it's not like bending and stuff so once i figured that out it was you know fine and then also another issue is that when you the bag once the formula like the feed starts getting like halfway or like lower the bag tends to slip down like because it's like on the backpack it has the the velcro straps right but this doesn't have anything holding it up so the bag will sometimes slip down and then when that happens you know it might like you know you you'll get air in the tubing or you know it'll will stop running because you know the bags like there's like an obstruction or whatever so usually like when my feet is like almost done like it's like the last hour or so of formula in there. I usually just take it out and put it on my um my IV pole. But I do feel like um, 
overall I think I probably prefer this one I feel like it's more um, practical the fanny pack so obviously you know you have those two options if you wanna for when you want to take your feed with you and then apart from that I know that online some people have like come up with these it's like a hanger or something that you can like hang on like a hook or something or like on your wall and it'll hold it's like essentially like an IV pole but instead of the IV pole it's just like a hook and you can put your like your bag and the pump and everything and just kind of hook it up instead of having the IV pole and that's like easier because you don't have to you know roll your pole around or they I saw one that's like a stand like it's like a contraption that someone like designed you can look for those I think they have them on like Etsy or you know different sites and you can you know there's a whole lot of options you're not just limited to the IV pool there are different ways for you to you know be more mobile while having your um being hooked up to your feeds so tip number C is to get a good pill crusher to crush your meds to put in through your tube um i feel like most of us who have feeding tubes probably have issues with like um you know taking pills in orally so to put them in through your tube you have to crush them and that's why it's important to find a pill crusher like not an expensive one but one that works for you so like this one i got it at walmart for around like five dollars and i find that it works pretty well for like crushing my pills and you just like you put it in you put the pill in here and then you just screw it and once it gets to the bottom, you know, you kind of just go back and forth, back and forth until it, like, crushes it well. Um, and I know they have, like, some fancy, like, ones that supposedly, like, work well. But, like I said, it doesn't have to be expensive, just as long as it gets the job done. Um, you can also use, like, a mortar and pestle. That I used to use one, but I found it was kind of hard for me because my grip isn't... That great so it would be hard for me to you know I had to use my strength to like you know crush the pill so I find that this one is easier for me I mean it's still kind of like like on days when my pain is bad it's still kind of a little bit hard for me but I find that this one is easier for me than the mortar and pestle but you know obviously whatever you prefer and also like another tip is you know, the pill also doesn't have to be, like, crushed super finely. Like, sometimes if you just put it in the, you know, if you pour it into, like, the medicine cup or wherever you store it and then pour some, like, hot water into there and leave it in there for a couple of minutes, the hot water will help. Like, if there's still, like, some pieces that are, like, big, you, like, stir it with the syringe or whatever and it'll kind of dissolve on its own. And also just, like, make sure that you uh double check with your pharmacist if you have any doubts as to what whether you can crush a pill and put it through your tube because there are pills that you're not supposed to crush like ever um pills that have like a coating on the outside like a film coating or like extended release pills like you have to you know, obviously call your pharmacist and ask and not if they tell you that you can't crush it you know try and ask for if they have like a liquid form available or like a dissolvable tablet that you can put in your mouth or some other way to you know get your medication but you know obviously always make sure don't just like crush your medi medicines and put them in there because like I said there are some that you're not allowed to crush so always make sure I always call my um, pharmacy and ask them whenever I get a new med whether I can um, crush it and put it in through my tube and lastly this isn't really a tip um but I just wanted to mention it to like those of you who are new to tube feeding um I know that it can get like very overwhelming and you know you get frustrated having to learn all these things so just remember to like be kind to yourself and be patient with yourself it can be a lot to learn 
Um, so you're obviously not going to learn everything, you know, from one day to another. It's going to take time. So just, you know, have some patience. It's going to be frustrating. There's going to be days where it's going to be hard. You're going to be like, you know, screw this. I hate it. You know, I hate that I have to use this. And even like me as like a feeding tube user of like four years, over four years, it's, I have days where I get really frustrated with everything. I'm just like, oh, I hate this. Like, Sometimes you have to just take a step back and, you know, maybe like take a deep breath and, you know, kind of relax and be like, you know, yeah, maybe right now I'm struggling, but it's not always going to be like that, you know, and eventually you kind of get the hang of it. You get a rhythm to it and you, things get easier, you know, as you do them more and more and you figure it out and you know, just remember that there's a whole community out there of people to support you. So I really hope that this helped you out in some way or form. Um, if you did learn something new, if, you know, any of these tips helped you out, then, you know, let me know in the comments down below. I would really like to know if you guys tried these out. And also, if you have any to be tips or hacks or whatnot if you want to leave those down in the comments below too i would love to see um some of you your guys's hacks so i hope that you enjoyed this video if you did then please give it a like and if you would like to see more videos like this from me then please hit the subscribe button and i really hope to see you in the next one bye